Okay, so this is the rest of um, the video about putting text on the screen, basically. So the other video showed you everything you see here. This was how to load a font and how to show some type on the screen. So now what I'm going to do is instead of just putting the word type in quotes here, I'd like to get that from a file somewhere. So um, I'm going to start out by... Uh, explaining that there's a string type and um, I could hold inside this uh, string variable or this, this sentence variable of the type string I could hold um, something like this is a sentence um, but if I'd like to hold an entire files worth of data then I have to hold it in a list of strings so this is lists and arrays we're going to use kind of synonymously so to create an array of something, let's say I wanted to hold a bunch of integers, it would look like this. I could call it numbers, and then I have these two square braces. And that will look like this. Item number 0 contains the number 5. Item number 1 contains the number 8, and so on, until uh, it gets to the maximum size, whatever, whatever that is. Um, but I could also hold um, words in here, so maybe uh, item number zero of my array contains Fred, and the other one contains Mary, and so on. That's the one we're going to do right now. So um, what I'd like is to have a list of strings, and I'll call that list lines. So this is lines, the lines of my text file. So um, what I'm going to do is, right here in setup, I'm going to fill up that lines variable, that lines array, with a bunch of lines from a text file. And this load strings function is what we do. And I'll call it list.text. And um, I don't have that text file yet, so I'll make it. I'm going to put Fred and Mary and Todd in it. And I will save it on my desktop as list.text. So that's just a text editor. And um, now what I can do is uh, find that file and drag it right into my sketch. You can see that it was added. And um, just to see if things are okay, I could hit run right now. It runs. I haven't made any changes to what happens on the canvas, but it did presumably load this file without any problem because it didn't give me any errors. But um, basically now what I want to do is uh, I want to display all of the lines from that text file on the screen. So I mentioned uh, for loops in one of the other movies and this is a great use for it. So basically anytime we have an array or a list of things we use a for loop to go through each item in the array. So this is pretty common. We start at item number zero and we keep going as long as uh, I, our counter, is less than the length of my list. That You see length turned to orange, that's uh, a keyword. So um, basically saying as long as we're in the, uh, the bounds of my list, I want to do what's in the curly braces, which is to print out an item from the array. So if I did this, it would print out the same item, item number zero, every time. Uh, if there are three things in the list, it'll go through three times, but every time it's printing the first thing. So what I really want is to put I there. So that says item number I of lines. And we can see that I starts out at zero, but it keeps growing until it gets to the maximum size of the, the array. So uh, if I run this right now, it's probably going to look pretty ugly. It's showing all the lines on top of each other. Just to make things easy, why don't I just show them at random places uh, on the screen. So here's my way of showing, showing it at a random place on the screen. And when I look at it now, there they are, random places. Run it again, they're in new random places. So um, this shows you how to get information from a text file on your hard drive, but the best part about this is that you can actually just put in a URL here. I didn't explain that before, but you can do the same thing with images. When you use the load image function, you could just put a URL in there. You don't have to um, download it to your computer. Uh, so here we go. That's the Google homepage dumped on the screen in random places. Pretty easy.